So remember a couple weeks ago, I talked about these labels that we put on ourselves. Weak, selfish, lazy, ungodly, forgetful. And maybe I remember I talked about those labels get on ourselves for different reasons, but I talked about through the word of God, taking those labels off. God says you can't. I mean, the world says you can't. Your neighbors say you can't. Your, your friends may even, your family members even say you can't. But God says, with me, all things are possible. And I talked about through the word of God, taking those labels off. We've got to see ourselves the way God sees us. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit today, but mainly today, what I'm not going to talk about, I'm not talking about taking a label off of you. I want to talk about labels that are on other people and your ability to take those labels off of them through just encouraging them in different ways. You know what? Uh, it's interesting because we have such a belief. How many believe that God, God can do anything? Okay. And we understand that and we believe that. And is that true? That's absolutely true. But sometimes we, we, we underestimate the power that God has given us. And we underestimate the influence that we have in people's lives. Can I tell you what? God has called you to greatness. God has called you to do wonderful things. God has called you to be incredible people. But not just that you would be incredible people for yourself, but that you would influence other people around you. It's interesting because there's a, a, a passage in Matthew. Uh, guys, go ahead and put it up. It's Matthew 5. We'll have this up here on the screen. And, 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 and look what it says. Blessed are you when they revile you and persecute you and they say all kinds of evil things against you fos falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice with exceeding gladly for great is your reward in heaven for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you you are the salt of the earth but if the salt loses its flavor how can it be seasoned it is good it is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men you are stay here you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden now here's what i want you to recognize some people read this scripture or they quote this scripture and they think this is Matthew speaking this, writing this about Jesus. Can I tell you what? This is not Matthew writing about Jesus. This is Matthew quoting Jesus speaking about us. You are, you are the light of the world. And that light has been called that you can go around and influence other people. How many feel secure? How many feel insecure sometimes? Raise your hand if, you're, if you feel insecure sometimes. If, if your hand's not up, I'm going to kick you because I think you're sleeping, okay? <laughs> How many know we all feel insecure sometimes? And there's something so encouraging about saying, hey, you know what? I, I like that. You know what? Uh, um, uh, George said to me today, you know what? He saw me this morning. He said, wow, pastor, that shirt looks good on you. I'm like, yeah, it does. <laughs> how, many, how, how many know I might necessarily, as I look at myself in the mirror in the morning, I might not think that because we're all insecure to some extent. But to hear George say that, man, how many know that made me feel good? And our influence, we can just do, and you say, oh, it's not a big deal. No, it is a big deal. And notice what the Bible says is your light 
wasn't designed to put it under the bed. It was designed to put it on a lamppost, to be an influencer, to encourage other people. You know, you know, many times we have these thoughts. Oh, oh, oh I, I think that thought about that person, or I think that thought about this person, or I think something good about that person. But how many know those thoughts? You know what? How many know here? I'm, I, I'm, just, I'm just making this up, so don't buy me no C's candy, okay? But how many know the C's candy that you thought about buying your pastor? You know what? As you drive by, and I talk about how much I love C's candy, how many know <laughs> that thought doesn't manifest itself? It's just a thought. What we need to be is people that put that light and put it up on a lampstand. That you are encouraging other people. That you have the intelligence to, yes, what we talked about two weeks ago. Matter of fact, go on the internet and listen to that sermon again. That we would start to take these labels off through the word of God. But not, not just that. Today I'm not talking about that. Today I'm talking about having the understanding that you, <coughs> you are blessed in order to be a blessing to others. Is this making sense to anyone? And so, you know what? And, and, and all of us can do that. Because let me tell you what. You are all around insecure people. <coughs> all the time. Can I tell you what? One of the reasons, you know what? You don't have to raise your hand. But, but, but I worked in the grocery store for 25 years. And I had a just... Idiot manager after idiot manager after idiot manager after idiot manager. Just very, I mean, just non-professional, low um, thought, not very, um, not encouraging at all, just negative. I mean, just throughout my 25 years can I tell you what that's a expression of that's an expression of their insecurity see our calling is to pull people up to recognize God has pulled us up now we have the responsibility to pull somebody else up and we think it's like we, 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 we understand the power of God and we understand how powerful God is. So we have this mentality. It's like, oh, well, if something's going to happen, God's going to do it. Well, here's a thought. Maybe God puts you in that place that you would do that. Amen. Happens, happens. You know where it happens a lot? In the family, in the households. And the husband's waiting for the wife and the wife's waiting for the husband and the husband's waiting for the wife. And in this period of time, they have a tendency to criticize each other. They say good organizations that are healthy. You know what they do? They have a five or a six to one ratio. What am I saying? To every time that they point out something that needs to be improved... They're encouraging that person six or five or six times. Is that the ratio that you have with your spouse, with your husband, with your wife? Is that, is that the ratio that you have with your kids? Now, am, am I saying, am I saying to you parents, don't, don't, don't challenge your kids. Don't correct your kids. Don't, don't discipline your kids. I'm not saying that at all. Here's what I'm saying for every correction. You know what? Do you spend five times or six times telling them how awesome they are? Because I tell you what, that's the ratio that God is looking for. God is looking for, God has blessed you. God is, here, here, here. Not, 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 that, you're, not that you have arrived, because I haven't arrived either. But how many would raise your hands and say, since you've been coming to this church, since you've been hearing the word of God week in and week out, and maybe you've only been coming here a little while, but already a little while. How many know it only takes a little of the word of God? The Bible says a little leaven leavens the whole loaf. Well, that's in the negative, but that's also in the positive. 
How many just hearing a couple encouraging messages from the word of God, you can start to change your life? How many would raise your hand and say, Pastor, I'm just telling you, since I started coming here and listening to the word of God, my life has gotten in some aspect, my life has gotten better. Raise your hand if that's you. Raise your hand if that's you. See, all over the place. Here, here, I want to say this to you lovingly. Okay, great. Now take what you've learned and start applying it to somebody else's life. Start taking those, those labels, you know what? Those labels that other people have put on your life and you through the word of God have been able to take those labels off. Start to notice those labels on other people. Freely you have received, freely give. Understand your responsibility now to help somebody else out. We look at, we look at uh, uh, there's a scripture in, um, in, uh, in Mark. And in Mark, there's a, there's a, there's a, a point in time and, and Jesus is, is hungry. And so he goes and, and he, he speaks. He sees this fig tree. So he goes to the fig tree. When he gets to the fig tree, there's nothing on it. There's no fruit. He wants a fig. There's no figs. And so he curses it. Okay. And seeing the fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he could find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not a season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. Here's a really important part. And disciples heard it. Death and life, the Bible says in the power of the tongue. And so, you know what? But we read this and we think, yeah, of course. That was Jesus. Jesus is all powerful. Jesus was the son of God. <clears throat> Here's the crazy thing. The next day, the next day, they get up and they walk outside and Peter sees the fig tree. But now the fig tree is all withered up. And he says to Jesus, Whoa, look, the fig tree that you curse, look, it's withered. And then Jesus says something really, really, really important. He says this He says, Have faith in God. Why does he say that? Here's why because he's about to tell them, Hey guys, I did this, and you can do it too. How many believe we believe that God can do great things? But we don't understand that God has given us power and authority on this earth that we can make a difference in, in people's lives. Does this make sense? And here's what he says. He says, here's what he says. He says, <clears throat> go to uh, 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 verse 23. Look what he says. For assuredly, I say to you. You know what that means? I'm about to tell you something so incredible, it's going to be hard for you to believe. So before I tell it to you, here's what I'm going to say. For sure, this is the truth. For assuredly, I say to you, and here, here, here's the crazy word I want you to catch. Are you, do you see it? Whoever. Say whoever. whoever. Okay. Whoever says... To this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things which he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Amen. Now listen, I've listened to a lot of goofballs on the internet who think they're pastors, but they're self-ordained, and they're not. And they mock this scripture, and they mock people who teach this scripture. And they make fun of it and they belittle it. Can I tell you what? Be careful when you belittle the theology of Jesus Christ. And they claim that, oh, that pastor's taking it out of context. No, you can read it eight times. I'm not taking this out of context. There, here, let me give you the context. Again, there was this fig tree. <laughs> Jesus was hungry. And he went to it. And there was no figs, and he cursed it. The next day, Peter got up, and he said, Look, this fig tree, it's in that context 
This is good hermeneutics. That he says, for sure, I'm telling you, that whosoever says to that mountain, if there's a real belief in their heart, they can say that mountain, they can, here, 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 here's what I'm trying to teach you. Stop thinking that you can't make a difference in this world. Because let me tell you who, who thinks that you can make a difference in this world. Jesus Christ. Amen. This is one passage. I could turn to passages like this all day long. At some point in time, the apostles, who were for a long time just goofballs. How many know these guys were goofballs for a long time? At some point in time, they changed and they didn't become goofballs anymore. Amen? I'm not saying that they're perfect men, but they started to, you know what the main thing they started to do? Have faith to believe God that they could start to walk in the power and authority to make a difference in people's lives. Amen. 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 And what I'm saying to you is, yes, take those labels off yourself. But as you're getting the labels off yourself, start to notice other people that are all around you. Because what you'll see is you'll see that they need help too. You know what? Uh, last year, uh, we had come home and there was a plant and the plant was all withered and all, you know what I mean? It, was, it looked like it was about to be dead. And Tamara said, just, just throw that plant away. You know, that plant is dead. I said, no, 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 honey. All it needs is some nourishment. All it needs is some water. Let me, let me you know, I'm, I'm, I'm total optimist. So, you know, let me just water it. Well, sure enough, I watered it. And the next, in, in two days, it was all perked up and was good. In two weeks, it had these beautiful flowers around it. Here's the thing. You ever seen a, you ever seen a plant that was needed some water? You ever see it just hop? Huh? Hop near a, a, a water spigot? Lean on over and turn on the spotter spigot? You, know, you ever seen that? Listen, let me tell you what. And you, can, and you can criticize, and I get it. I get it because the reality is, should we all, you know, Pastor George, should we all have the ability to do what David did? Absolutely. And encourage ourselves Absolutely. Go to the website. Two weeks ago, listen to the sermon again. Matter of fact, I'm so encouraged. This is just for free. This is free. You can do whatever you want. But what Pastor Joel does is he listens to the sermon on Sunday. But then on Monday, one of the first things he does Monday morning, he listens to the sermon again. Amen. Okay. I'm just encouraging you. Faith comes through, not having heard, but hearing my thought is, you know, if some of you walk away and say, oh, my goodness, God spoke to me. That was so encouraging. Tomorrow, this message, same message, is going to get better. Because there'll be things that the Holy Spirit will start to quicken. It's a great habit. Thank you, you know what, uh, uh, Pastor, for helping us and leading us in that way. Pastor Joel, what a blessing that is. But here's what, here's what I want you to catch. Stop thinking that God is the only one who can do anything. And understand that the same God that cursed that fig tree says to us, hey, you can make a difference in people's lives. How, how many of you have been encouraged by something that I've said during the preaching of the word of God? Raise your hand again if that's you. Well, well, now it's your job to take all those messages that you've heard and to start to encourage other people. I started talking about Pastor Best two weeks ago, and I, I didn't really finish the story. Dr. Best was a, 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 a professor that I had my first year in Bible school. My first year in Bible school, I took this proficiency test. All the freshmen had to take the proficiency test and, and, uh, and pass that test to be able to get into uh, English 101, which was composition English, where they taught you how to write a paper. Except there was one problem. I didn't pass the test. Me and 12 other people didn't pass the test. Okay. So we had to go into the remedial English class that wasn't even college credits. 
It was like, you guys can't even. And we couldn't take English 101. Why? Because our English skills weren't high enough that we could write a paper. That you can be learned to write a paper. Then, of course, you know who Mrs. Brooks is. Do you know who Mrs. Brooks was? How many knows who Mrs. Brooks is? Raise your hand. You guys were listening a couple weeks ago. She was my second grade teacher. Which I liked Mrs. Brooks so much that I went to her second grade for two years, not one year. She said, Pastor Drew, who flunks to second grade? Who does that the second grade? I do. I do. And here's the crazy thing. When I flunked the second grade, because Mrs. Brooks thought that I needed some help in my English skills, in my reading skills. Here's the crazy thing. After going through the second grade twice, I graduated. But when I was in the third grade, you'd think like I would be the best reader in the third grade, right? You'd, you'd think, right? No, I was like one of the worst graders in the third grade. And the fourth grade, and the fifth grade, and the sixth grade, and the seventh grade, and the eighth grade, and the ninth grade, and the tenth grade. And it's not like you're not aware of it. You know it. The 11th grade, the 12th grade. Then I, 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 I moved down to Newport Beach. I, I go to a community college to then drop out, to then sign back up the next you know, year to drop out and sign up and drop out. And after a while of this, you just feel like a complete loser. And then I get enough gumption and courage to feel like I'm going to go to Life Bible College. To then, the very first test, you know what, is the English proficiency test of which I can't pass that test. So I'm in the English proficiency test, but then I have these other classes too. I just couldn't take English 101, but I still took other college courses. So I'm in... Um, Bible survey. So Bible survey, they just went through the whole Bible in one quarter. Just real quick overview of the whole Bible. And they did it in section, five sections. The first section, there was only five tests in the whole, in the whole five tests were your grade. Okay? And the first test, guess what I got? Guess what I got? Okay. Somebody send an A. Thank you. You're preaching my sermon. Okay. You're encouraging me. No, no, no. I didn't get an A. I got an F. So I got an F, flunked the second grade, you know what, in remedial English class. And how many know, you know what, Satan just comes and says, you are a loser. I remember thinking, what am I doing here? I'm, I'm, just, I'm just fooling myself. You know what? I just thought, I'm a failure. But Dr. Best... She didn't teach me English. You know what she taught me? She taught me Jesus. She taught me with him all things are possible. That, that uh, Tamara found out, you know, Tamara, you know what, you know, thought I was the, all that in a bag of chips. She still thinks that. Don't tell her any different. And, uh, and I don't know how she found out, but you know what? That year, I made the honor roll. She, tell, she told my pastor, and the pastor told the whole church, Pastor Drew made the honor roll. Like, yeah. <laughs> Academic giants. Now, here's the crazy thing. Here's the crazy thing. You can say Pastor, academic giant, I've been here when you read the scripture. There's words that's like, don't you, you don't know the difference? You can't, you can't read where versus were? Come on. Listen, you can think whatever you want. But Pastor Best <laughs> took that label of failure off of me. And I ain't going to let you put it back on me. So, well, well, don't, Pastor, don't you hear yourself? Eh. Eh. See, here, here, in English and Spanish. 
Pastor George, English and Spanish. You know what? What are you, what are you Pastor? I'm muy inteligente. That's what I am. Amen? See, I can't afford to go back to that old way. And there's other people that you have in your life and your responsibility is because you can see something in them that they can't see and it's your responsibility to take that off of them. Is this making sense? Guys in the back, show me the uh, second clip. It's, uh, well, I don't want to tell you what it is, but just, guys, can you, can you show that second clip? Watch this. Boy bounded home from school and excitedly handed an envelope to his mother. Mom, my teacher gave this letter to me and told me only you are to read it. What does it say? He beamed brightly. Her eyes welled with tears as she read the letter out loud to her child. Your son is a genius. This school is too small for him and doesn't have good enough teachers to train him. Please teach him yourself. Many years later, the boy, now a grown man, was cleaning out his recently departed mother's belongings when he found the folded letter from his old teacher. He opened it and was stunned to learn its true content. Your son is mentally deficient. We cannot let him attend our school anymore. The man fell to the floor, barely able to comprehend the depth of devotion and love from his mother. After an hour, he finally regained his composure and scribbled something in his diary. Thomas Alva Edison was a mentally deficient child whose mother turned him into the genius of the century. Can you, can, you, can you see something in other people that they can't see themselves? I, my dad was this way. He was able to see something in me that I couldn't see myself. And he spoke that over me over and over and over again. He thought I was, he, 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 after he retired, he came to this church for a little while and, and I was blessed to have him as part of the congregation. And I would call him, I would call him every Monday. I'll tell you the rest of that story in a minute. But when Tamara and I were children's pastors, we were children's pastors for six years. And I'd have these little boys and little girls, but, but a lot of little boys, they just want to hang out with me. They just, they'd come up and they, they wouldn't, they'd like, like at first they'd kind of be coy, and, but you know what? They just, they just kind of hang around me. It's like, what do you do? Get over here, Jody, get over here. Give me a hug, man. You're the man. I'm so proud of you. They just wanted for me to see something in them that they couldn't see themselves. We would, we would have, we had, we had worshipers like, um, like Pastor Curtis and Ariel are developing. I mean, if you weren't here Wednesday, oh my goodness. You know what? Hey guys, get your game on because the kids are beating your butts. I'm telling you in praise and worship. You know, not that it's a contest, but they are, they are our examples. They are incredible worshipers. And we had that. How did you get that? I came into this four square church. It was like most four square churches that I had seen before. Kids are like squirrely. They're like, they're, they're, the worship leader's trying to really lead them. They're not paying any attention. Pastor, what did you do? I, the first thing I did is I made up my mind that we are going to have a, a kids that are just going to be sold out for Jesus Christ. And then I started modeling for them what worship was to look like. Then I took one of my, one of the, one of the worship, one of the, the guitar players, his, his wife was on, or not wife, his girlfriend at that point, later on wife, was a praise exalter. And I put her on, on the stage and she would just worship God. And then finally, I would found, after, after a couple of months, I found some, some kid that would worship God, and I'd call him up on the stage. And I'd say, you know what, Kevin? In front of everybody, Kevin, you're the man. Man, I'm so proud of you. Man, I tell you what, we were worshiping, and I looked down, and I saw you worshiping. Oh, man, I tell you what, God is so pleased. I'm so pleased. I mean, it didn't take very long before all the boys wanted to be like Kevin. 
You know what the Bible says? Paul says, follow me as I'm a follower of Christ. What am I doing? Georgie, come on up here for a minute. What am I doing? Go ahead, sit on down. Just sit on, down right here on the front, front. What am I doing? You can put that on yourself. What am I doing? I'm seeing Kevin not in how he, how he used to be, but I'm calling him up. Taking those, those things. How many know kids can be very insecure sometimes? <clears throat> and many times they're insecure, not coincidentally. Parents, man, spend a lot of time, you know what, um, disciplining your kids. Absolutely. But make sure, you know what, for every time you correct them, you tell them how awesome they are. I'm not talking about making stuff up. Uh, Georgie, Georgie's here because I'm, I'm going to model this for you. And the things that I'm going to say about Georgie, I'm not making this up. I'm not blowing smoke. I'm not like, oh, I wonder what I can say about Georgie. Let me get a, let me get a dictionary, find some good words. You know what? No, I see this in Georgie's life all the time. Amen. And maybe, maybe Georgie is like all of us, and I'll include myself. Maybe, maybe he is going through insecurities. How I many know we all can go through this stuff? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my words, my encouragement, my, my freely I've ever received. What Dr. Best did to me, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do to Georgie. I'm going to say, what are you talking about, loser? Are you kidding me? You're, you're one of the most gifted people I've seen in the whole church. And, and, and Georgie, let me, tell you, let me tell you where you're really gifted. You know what I mean? Because, you know what, you could teach people to play guitar, you could teach people to do the soundboard, you could teach people that. But let me just tell you about, let me tell you about you, Georgie. There's a spiritual maturity. How old are you, Georgie? 26. There's a spiritual maturity that I just don't see in much, most 26-year-olds. Matter of fact, I hardly see it in, I don't even see it in, in 52-year-olds, let alone somebody your age. But let me, tell you, let, me, let me tell you what's so awesome about you, Georgie. And there's many things, but I don't only have a little bit of time. We're already in the red, so i got to be quick. So, but, but here's what I want to say. You know what? Here's what you are. You have a humility that allows you to be open to allowing me to correct you. When I correct you, you don't defend Matter of fact, I got to ask you, when I'm correcting you on the soundboard, I got to ask you what happened. I ask you what happened first because it could be something that has nothing to do with anybody back there. And I recognize if I don't ask that, I won't even know. It's your humility that forces me to ask that question. Because you won't even say anything. You won't say well, Pastor, I, I know that happened, but let me tell you why it happened. It happened because of this, and it really didn't happen. You'll just be humble and just, just listen to what I have to say. There's, a, um, there's an optimism that you have. There's an attitude that you care. There, here, there's, a, there's a joy that you have uh, that just speaks to your optimism about what God is going to do in the future. And in the midst of, it's like, uh, you know, early 20s, uh, I'm not sure, but, but God's going to take care of me. And he has, and he does. Oh, one more thing. And there's an obedience, there's an a, a attitude of willingness to be obedient in what you know to do. I'm not saying you're perfect, but I'm saying there's this Willingness that you have, that you have a desire to obey God. Now, we can do that all day long. Because I could, I, I mean, we could be here till Esperanza. Because I, I, I got a lot to say about this man. Oh my goodness, he was an intern for years and he's such a blessing. I get, Jonathan, oh my goodness. 
JC, ooh, on and on and on. That's your responsibility. Imagine a church where he's talking about her and she's talking about her and she's talking about her and he's, she's talking about him and he's talking about her. And she's talking about him, but none of it is in the negative. It's all in building up and building up and building up and building up. And it's not, watch this, and it's not just the pastor. How many feel encouraged when you come to this church? Okay, it's not just the pastor anymore. But it's all of us looking around going, oh, our calling is to lift people up. Is God speaking to you? you, you can have, yeah, of course. Is God speaking to you? Yeah. Get the labels off yourself. But hey, can you get the labels off other people too? Who's God speaking to? Raise up your hand. I want to pray with you really fast. Father, we thank you that, that this message is from you. Help us, Father, to be those people that encourage other people all day long. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.